Monkey gland surgeon. Doctors and scientists attending the 28th Annual Surgical Congress of France in Paris on October 18, 1919, were at first startled and then frankly sceptical when a tall, aristocratic-looking surgeon announced, in effect, that he had found what chemists and alchemists had been seeking for centuries, the elixir of youth. He was 53-year-old, Russian-born Dr. Sergei Voronov, and he told the Congress he had successfully and he had told the Congress that he had successfully rejuvenated a number of aged animals by means of gland grafting and proposed to do the same for human beings. Three years later Dr. Voronov presented to his astounded colleagues one of the first human subjects of his radical experiments, an old man to whom he had restored the physical and intellectual powers of his vigorous maturity. Because he had grafted into the subject's body the interstitial gland of a chimpanzee, the creature most like man physiologically, Voronov was promptly dubbed the monkey gland man by the world's press, and the soubriquet stuck. Voronov's work in rejuvenating animals was found to be effective, but on a large scale, uneconomic, and since the discovery of a few years ago of a synthetic male human hormone, the surgical technique employed by him and his Austrian rival Eugene Steinack has largely given way to the more simple injection technique of rejuvenation. In his lifelong study of those mysterious organs, the glands, and their profound effect on mind and body, Voronov followed the path marked out by his illustrious predecessor, Charles Edward Brown Sicard, who died more than 50 years ago, with his theories on the subject of rejuvenation by glandular grafting almost universally rejected. Although Russian by birth, he was born near Moscow in 1866. Voronov made France his country by adoption, apart from 10 years from 1900 to 1910, a surgeon to the Khedive of Egypt, and a few years in America during World War II. He lived and worked in France most of his life. His medical training at the Paris Sorbonne and his experience as chief surgeon at the Russian hospital in the French capital brought him into intimate contact with the physical and mental deterioration which comes with old age. It seemed to him that man's lifespan was too short, that the onset of that deterioration at the age of 60 or 70 was wrong and wasteful, and he became fascinated by the problem of prolonging the duration of vigorous, useful, productive life far beyond the traditional threescore years and ten. Voronov first became interested in the functions of the interstitial glands during a study of eunuchs in the harem of Cairo. He observed that they usually died between the ages of fifty and sixty, and that well before death they have every appearance of being effectively aged, dry skin, bloated body, dull eyes, stooping gait. Their aspect is the outcome of the fact but deprived of the essential factor of youth and vigour, they have prematurely aged and have died well before the term ordinarily attained by normal men, he decided. During the First World War, Voronov served at the military hospital in Paris and performed valuable bone grafting work in repairing the shattered limbs of wounded soldiers. In many cases, he grafted portion of the patient's own fibula, but in many others he successfully used the bones of monkeys, and his experiences in that work, coming on top of his observation of eunuchs, strengthened his half-formed determination to use our simian cousins as a sort of reservoir of spare parts for the human body. His study of glands and their functions led him to the conclusion that while the interstitial glands were the principal agent in the retention or recovery of youthful vigour, in certain individual cases the grafting of thyroid or pituitary glands was necessary or desirable. His early gland grafting experiments were performed on rams and bulls in Algeria. In May 1918, he grafted the sex gland of a two-year-old ram into the senile and decrepit body of another ram aged 12 years, equivalent to 80 or 90 years in a human being. The effect was astonishing. In Voronov's own words, the transformation of the senile animal into a vigorous beast followed as if by enchantment. The old age of rams usually lasts about five years, and the extreme age to which they live normally is 14 years. But in the case of this ram, it remained vigorous up to six days before its death, at the prolonged age of 20, when it suddenly declined, lost appetite, became drowsy, and died. Six years later, Voronov achieved another outstanding success in a gland grafting operation on a 17-year-old bull. His fame spread, 
and it was not long before stock breeders throughout Europe and in many other parts of the world were seeking his services to improve the quality as well as the numbers of their flocks and herds. The French Ministry of Agriculture engaged him to try to increase the wool yield of sheep in the French African colonies by means of gland grafting. He succeeded in doing so, but English agricultural experts who investigated the work in 1927 reported that it was uneconomic. Voronoff next conceived the idea of grafting an extra interstitial gland into young rams, bulls, etc., and so developing a race of super sheep, super cattle, and so on. With the permission of the Algerian government, he conducted a series of experiments on these lines, the results of which he reported to the Congress of the French Association for the Advancement of Sciences in 1926. Grafted two-year-old rams were found to be 12.5% heavier on average than non-grafted animals of the same age, while the weight of their fleeces averaged 20% more than that of the original rams. The weight of the grafted rams' progeny and that of the progeny's fleeces showed similar proportional increases. Voronoff first tested the efficacy of grafting glands from the higher apes into humans in 1913, and it was not a case of implanting a monkey's interstitial glands into the body of an aged man, but one of grafting the thyroid gland of a chimpanzee into a boy who, suffering from a thyroid deficiency, was a near idiot. The thyroid is the gland which enables persons to think. The improvement in the lad's mental condition was gradual but noticeable. Within a year, his intelligence had increased to the point where he was able to go to school, and in 1917, he was passed by army doctors as fit for active service in the French army. Many people, not unnaturally, feared that the grafting of a monkey gland into a human body would result in the development of simian characteristics, either directly in the patient or in his or her descendants. Voronoff pointed out that as the hormone secretion from a monkey's interstitial gland is chemically identical to that of a man, there was no more danger of that happening than there was of a person developing bovine characteristics after having been injected with adrenaline or pituitary gland extract taken from a bull or cow. One of the first two men who had the courage to submit to the grafting into their bodies of a chimpanzee's interstitial gland was a manufacturer who, forced into bankruptcy at the age of 60, felt incapable of starting life over again. He was, so Voronoff wrote, completely demoralized, complaint of general weakness, loss of memory, and fatigue that every effort rapidly provoked. Voronoff performed a grafting operation on him in June 1922, and a year later he wrote, the transformation which has taken place in this man gave me a sudden shock, but an agreeable one. Instead of the stout, fat man of a year before, with hanging flabby cheeks and a heavy walk, I saw before me a young, slender, smart-looking man. I realized before me the legend of Faust, without the subject having had need to sell his soul to the devil. Perhaps the most striking result was that achieved by the grafting operation performed on an Alsatian peasant in Algeria named George's Beer who, at seventy-three, looked as if he were eighty, body bent and shriveled up, gait unsteady, sottish look, considerable emaciation, general appearance of great physiological destitution. Voronoff made a departure in the case of Bear, in that he used the interstitial gland not of a chimpanzee, but of an Algerian monkey called a mago. The operation was performed at the Algiers Central Hospital by a Dr. Cochez, one of Voronoff's followers in the technique under Voronoff's supervision. Thirteen months later, in April 1925, Voronoff was again in Algiers and, to quote his words, Georges Beer was literally unrecognizable. Instead of the pale and debilitated being with wandering eyes, hollow cheeks and pitiably shrunken body, we had before us a man with a full, jovial and ruddy face, sparkling eyes and a general appearance of excellent health. His mental improvement was equally manifest. To the various questions put to him, he replied with vivacity, and even with a certain amount of humour that contrasted sharply with his faltering words enunciated with so much difficulty before the grafting. His experiments in connection with the development of super sheep by grafting extra interstitial glands into young rams led his mind to the startling question, why not try to create a race of supermen endowed with the physical and intellectual attributes very superior to ours? The first mother, he wrote some years ago, who would entrust me with her child for this purpose might perhaps contribute a new chapter to the history of humanity. So far as is known, no mother had the courage and confidence to do so. 
Whether Voronov ever submitted to a grafting operation on himself was his own professional and personal secret. When in 1934 he married beautiful blonde Gertrude Schwetz, 42 years his junior, he told reporters, I am only 68 and can get along with other monkey glands. He did add, though, that he supposed he would have to have a grafting sooner or later to keep pace with my wife. Voronov returned to France from America after the war to find that his monkey farm at Mentone in the Italian Riviera had been depopulated. He stated that he would continue his researches, bone grafting in Paris, and that further monkey gland work would have to wait. Dr. Sergei Voronov died after a brief illness at Le Swan, Switzerland, aged 85. His dream of prolonging the human lifespan to 120 years or more and his revolutionary idea of developing a race of supermen was still a long way from becoming reality. In the 1930s, a Voronoff disciple, Dr. H. Leighton Jones, established a monkey farm near Wyong, New South Wales, Australia, and was believed to have transformed a number of gland grafting operations on Australians. Dr. Leighton Jones died in 1943, and the farm was closed. So for the time being, at any rate, Voronoff's monkey business seems to have fallen into the discard.